Star Wars Trilogy, Apprentice of the Force, released in 2004 for the Game Boy Advance courtesy of Ubisoft, around the same time that the original Star Wars Trilogy was getting its very first DVD release. And then people would complain about the latest changes George Lucas made to those films, because that was a thing Star Wars fans did at a time. Or maybe they still do. I neither nor nor particularly care. Personally, I was just happy to have those films on DVD at all and didn't care about whatever changes they made because the Star Wars trilogy still holds up, warts and all. Everything that came afterwards has been hit and miss. Mostly miss, but hey, that's what the comics and novels and some of the video games were for to sort of nullify some of the rubbish on screen. Apprentice of the Force has gotten the video review treatment before, but that review is about 10 years old and quite frankly hasn't aged all that well. Actually, a lot of those reviews from back then hasn't aged all that well. And while I had no intention of revisiting the Game Boy Advance Star Wars output anytime soon, something happened that compelled me to revisit these games. I won't say what yet, you'll have to wait till the end of the week to find that out, but I thought I'd give these games another shot and see if maybe I was being too harsh or perhaps too cute the first time around. Maybe these games weren't as bad as I originally... Nah, they're still bad. Let's get that out of the way. Although Apprentice of the Force is probably the least bad of this bunch, which probably isn't saying much, but... Well, let's let's dive back in anyways, shall we? Apprentice of the Force is a side-scrolling action platformer in which you assume control of Luke Skywalker and play through some of the major moments throughout the original Star Wars trilogy, from his early adventures on Tatooine to eventually reaching fully-fledged Jedi Knight in the climactic final battle on the second Death Star. There's also a couple levels where you'll be flying an X-Wing and... You know what, we'll get these out of the way first since they're a relatively small part of the game. First level is an overhead asteroid styles mini game where you have to clear away a number of TIE fighters to proceed onwards. Once that's done, it's another Death Star trench run, basically an overhead scrolling shooter style level where you avoid walls until you reach the end of the trench, where a cutscene will play and the Death Star will explode. Neither level is particularly good, the asteroid style level starts to become a bore after a while, and the trench run feels like something stretched out for the sake of it. It's probably the longest trench run level I've played in any Star Wars game. Even the Famicom Star Wars with its checkered surfaces didn't run this long. After that, there's only one speeder level in the Jedi portion that's similar to the trench run and almost as long and lame. Now that we got those out of the way, it's on to the rest of the game, which is slightly better, but not by much. Luke begins with a standard blaster with its slow laser blasts. There is a power-up you can collect that increases its effectiveness, but only lasts a few shots before it expires. Eventually, you'll gain a lightsaber, which is an elegant weapon for a more civilized game. But it's not too bad here. You can somewhat deflect your shots, and you can swap between the saber and the blaster, depending on which will serve you best. Aside from that, you have a basic set of moves. Running, jumping, grabbing onto ledges, aiming your blaster up and down by holding the left trigger, something that felt cumbersome at times, but people seem to appreciate this feature, so that's a thing. As you progress through the game, you'll earn additional abilities and force powers, from simple moves such as dashing or rolling to more fantastical moves such as double jumps, force pushes, and self-healing powers, to name a couple examples. Some of these moves use force energy, which can be replenished with pickups dropped by enemies, but can also slowly but surely regenerate on its own, so if you want to wait a while, that's an option. The way Luke controls and generally moves about is somewhat similar to the GBA conversion of Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, which shares a number of aspects with Apprentice of the Force, not only in terms of control and movement, but also the overall cell shaded esque graphical style and some similar animation sequences. Sands of Time on the GBA is a different beast, however. That one's more of an open-ended adventure game compared to Apprentice. Haven't played it a whole lot, but I've generally heard good things about it, so it might be worth revisiting in the future. However, what worked for Prince of Persia doesn't necessarily work for the further adventures of Luke Skywalker, and Apprentice of the Force somewhat highlights that here. Each level is fairly straightforward in its formula. You're to make it from point A to point B. There'll be some variations on the formula, such as needing to find keys or switches to progress onwards, as well as the number of levels where you'll need to escort an ally and prevent them from getting killed, but it's all the same deal. The one constant with these levels is that you'll have some platforming bits that you'll have to do, and every so often there'll be these encounter points, ambush points, whatever you want to call them. 
always signified by a black border surrounding the screens, you'll need to clear away any and all attacking forces before being allowed to progress onwards. It's a gimmick that I've seen in a number of these licensed Game Boy Advance titles, and it's one that I absolutely despise. Because while this sort of thing is fine for a beat-em-up game, in a platformer, it smacks of outright lazy level design, whose purpose is to artificially lengthen the game so that there is seemingly more play value than there actually is. This is Apprentice of the Force's biggest flaw. Too much padding to cover up for the lack of substance, and because the level design is somewhat repetitive in nature, you pass a few obstacles, get stopped by the black boredom of eternal boredom, slog through an encounter point, lather, rinse, repeat. Sometimes, again, the game will throw you a bone, have you look for key cards or other things. Other times it's an escort mission. Other times it's a boss fight of sorts. But the general formula doesn't change much beyond that, and it just feels like you're doing the exact same thing over and over and over again with different skins and things of that nature. And considering how long these levels tend to drag, the tedium starts to set in rather quickly. And the only reason I kept going to the end was because the game may or may not feature infinite lives. I'm still not sure. I know I've died countless times over the course of the couple hours I've played, and I've yet to see a game over. And let me tell you folks something, because some dumb fuck tried to be cute about this with the old review. If I ran out of lives and I got a game over, I'd welcome it. I'd shut the game off, set it aside, and saved it for another day, or possibly never come back to it. But I never did get a game over, and I just kept going. Don't know why, I could have just quit, but I dragged on. And with each subsequent ambush point, I just got more bored with it and more annoyed with it to the point that when I finally beat that last level and got the ending, there was no sense of satisfaction or accomplishment. I was like, thank fuck that shit's done with. I'm fucking done with this thing. With a completed save file, you could save up to three games. You could replay certain levels or tackle a new gauntlet level, which is just ambush point after ambush point. And I'm like, no, thank you. I'm fine. I'm cool. I'll just go back to Super Star Wars now. Now, if there's a couple positives I could levy towards Apprentice, one would be the desire to try and stick with the source material as closely as possible. Usually, video game adaptations of films would take some liberties to make the game more exciting, and Apprentice doesn't really do that. It tries to replicate the events of the films as they kind of sort of happen. The fight with the Rancor plays out exactly as it did in the movie, kind of, sort of. The lack of any outlandish enemies or boss battles. While it might not make for the most exciting gameplay, and in this case, that's probably being a bit kind, I can admire the attempt at trying to recreate key moments from the trilogy as they happened, even if the execution doesn't quite hit the mark. And while I'm not a huge fan of the way Luke controls or generally handles in this game, control does function properly. There's no lag, it's fairly responsive. It's a perfectly playable game marred by needlessly tedious and outright frustrating batting in the form of the ambush points. The graphics in Apprentice of the Force always struck me as somewhat awkward in that you have these somewhat cel-shaded, smoothly animated character models with virtually no facial features and otherwise awkward movement inhabiting these somewhat blind-looking level backdrops that, at the very least, look the part for whatever it's worth. The vehicle segments are only slightly better, just slightly better. They have no faces to begin with, so that's a plus. The cutscenes are either depicted with in-game character dialogues, sometimes occurring during boss battles and thus killing the flow of the game, or the still images with a blue hue while Luke Skywalker monologues about his past adventures. They are what they are, and I will just leave it at that. It's not terrible, but not great. It, it is what it is. Oh, the game also has some still shots in the gallery that slowly opens up as you play through the game. The images themselves are of decent quality, if nothing else, but that's about it, really. It's nothing special, and considering some of this stuff could be found online in some form or fashion, checking this stuff out on a small GBA screen or an even smaller Game Boy Micro screen, eh, no thanks, I'll pass. Apprentice features a serviceable rendition of various themes from the John Williams composed score of the original Star Wars trilogy, which is probably the faintest praise I could offer this or any of the GBA Star Wars games, considering these are not what I would call the best interpretations of these classic tracks in video game form. Apprentice does have a bit of a dynamic soundtrack going for it, in that tunes will shift from calm, low-key music during the platforming bits, but getting to the ambush points will bring up more tense musical cues, which is a nice touch if nothing else. And of course, you've got some of the stock Star Wars sound library on display here. Probably not the best quality audio, but again, it's serviceable for what you have. Star Wars Trilogy Apprentice of the Force can be best described as average fare with copious amounts of tedium. 
When you're playing the platforming bits, it's adequate, perhaps even fine. But when you're playing the ambush points, it's dull, boring tripe. And the overabundance of encounter points is what sours the overall game. Which is a shame because if you took those out, shortened some of the vehicle segments that also overstay their welcome, and maybe made the presentation a bit more lively, speed up the action a bit, you could have had a decent game on hand. And for what it's worth, if this was your first ever Star Wars video game, it's not exactly a bad place to start. But when you've played other side-scrollers of the past that covered the same ground this game does and did it way better, the Super Star Wars games on the Super NES, the NES games, even Empire on the NES, which isn't a good game by any means, then Apprentice feels like a significantly lesser product in comparison, and maybe that's why I was down on it the first time. Now, I'm not going to say that Apprentice of the Force is a hidden gem or an underappreciated classic, because it really isn't, and quite frankly, it's not a game that I would recommend or rank highly in regards to memorable Star Wars games, if only because there's just so many good ones. But it's typical average fare for the Game Boy Advance, it's one of the more competent licensed titles I've played on the handheld, which isn't saying much, and it's perhaps the second or third best Star Wars game on the Game Boy Advance, which again is not saying much. So yeah, Star Wars Trilogy, Apprentice of the Force on the GBA, not quite a classic or a great game, but you could do far worse. And next time, it gets worse. <laughs>